Well, hello everyone, this is Brother Donnie, Country Homestead Preacher. This is take two of 10 Minutes in the Word, and I just wanted to apologize about the technical difficulties we're having. I mean, it is something else. And uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm on the cellular, uh, the cellular link, so uh, the internet's hit and miss up here, and I'm kinda on my lunch break, so uh, I just wanted to, to uh, um, continue on our Bible study, so I'm putting this on after the fact. Again, let me apologize. I went on live right at 12 o'clock, but I went back and watched and it just didn't come out very good. So I'm putting this on again today, and this is 10 Minutes in the Word with Brother Donnie Country Homestead Preacher. It is already 1821. Can you believe that? The time's just kicking right on by. We are in the book of Galatians chapter number uh, five today, Galatians chapter five. And I appreciate everybody that took time to watch my rant yesterday. And I still hadn't calmed down from that mess, but we're going to get back to the scriptures today and see what the Lord would uh, do for us and what he will show us out of his word. So let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, we bless you. We thank you that you've let us come and study your word. And Lord, we pray for this country. We know it's messed up, but Lord, we will give you the glory because we are standing on that rock of Jesus Christ. And fathers, we, we, we ask, Lord, that you'll open the scripture so that we'll understand your will and your way. In Jesus' name, amen. So today we're in Galatians chapter five. We're gonna be uh, uh, picking up in verse number 10. And uh, the Apostle Paul, for five chapters, has been an, almost an apologist for the gospel. He is proven the case that the gospel stands alone on its uh, own merits, that the gospel is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that the only way to be saved is by faith alone in Christ alone. And that is the only way. And he's having to prove to the church at Galatia of whom he helped found that, look, you have strayed, you've gone in. He's already called them foolish in previous verses. He's already said that the Judaizers that was proclaiming this was cursed. So now let's pick up 10. Paul says, I have confidence in Galatians 5, verse 10. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will adopt no other view. Now, I want you to pay attention to this next statement. This is very important. But the one who is disturbing you, you know, that's what false teachers do. They come in and they disturb what God has built in his church. But the one who is disturbing you, look what Paul says, shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. So I want to address this just for a minute, folks. This applies to us greatly today. You know, in some churches, uh, people will uh, form groups within churches, and most of the time the way it happens, you'll have people who start to get a lot of knowledge off of line, off the internet. They'll start to develop their own thinkings and their own theologies, and before you know it, they've started to portray that in the church uh, they they start with little groups and and they they most of them is ignorant of of God's true word and they hear these uh, theories and speculations and they start to to implement a little of that in the church a little bit a little here a little there and before you know it false teaching has come into the church but I want to declare to you today based off of God's word that anyone that would preach another gospel except for faith in Christ alone, bears judgment. Now, I need to point out to you here, when Paul uses this word in verse 10, shall bear his judgment, that, that, that lends to the idea in the Greek that that judgment has always already been pronounced. And that because they are dabbling and walking in this false doctrine and putting this false gospel out, they are already judged. And we have people today, and uh, the thing in the church is everybody wants to get along. 
And I've heard people tell me, well, we have a man that comes to the church and he's got some different ideas and, and we know God sent him for some reason and we we just discuss with him and, and uh, you know, we really, uh, we just try to get along with him. Hogwash. If someone comes in and they bring in a, a, a false doctrine that is outside of biblical normative and they bring in a false gospel, that needs to be dealt with up to the point of throwing them out of the church. Because I assure you that if, if someone comes into the church of Jesus Christ and they are proclaiming falsity, whether it's uh, uh, whether it is uh, based on works, whether it's based on prosperity, whether it's based on uh, my own goodness, whatever someone's claiming other than the blood of Jesus Christ, they've already brought judgment upon themselves. So you need to recognize it this way. If you're involved with a fellowship, if you're involved in a church, and they have uh, uh, horrid doctrines that are contrary to the scripture, there is no reasoning with that person. There is no uh, coming up beside them and holding them up in prayer. No, they have brought judgment. That's what Paul says. The one who is disturbing you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. That means that the church at Galatia had one walking in their midst who was already judged. That's serious business. Now, now, now we deal with that by, by, you know, in the gospels, we deal with that by calling them to their, to their falseness and praying that they will repent. And if they do not repent and hold to their false teaching, you throw their backsides out of the church. You throw their backsides out of the church. All this stuff about we want to get along and we want to be patient. Now that applies in a lot of areas, but where that does not apply is false teaching because it is as if a cancer and comes in and eats everything away. But I, in verse 11, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why am I still persecuted? Then the stumbling block of the cross has been abolished. So Paul's saying, well, if this gospel that they're preaching is right, that you have to be circumcised, then, and, and, and if, if I am preaching this, if I, as a Paul, the Apostle Paul, are partaking of this, why am I uh, still being persecuted? No, no. Paul was preaching the cross, and he was persecuted. And the stumbling block here mentioned by Paul, the cross of Christ is a stumbling block to the falsities. It's a stumbling block to the falsities. That's what he's saying. Look at 12 now. This is very interesting. This is how serious Paul is. Would those, would that, those who are troubling you would even mutilate themselves. Now, I'll be honest with you. This scripture here is a handle and it takes deliberate study and I still have not got to the bottom of the whole thing because Paul's even saying well, let them go ahead and because the word mutilates cut, let them go ahead who are preaching this to you. Let them go ahead and cut themselves and be done with it. But he also could be saying, let them be cut off from the church. And I do know that any kind of false teaching, the proper path is for them to be just simply cut all the way off. And Paul's serious with this stuff here, folks. And, and when I tell you, and I've told you this a number of times, that every step of Paul's ministry, false preachers, was right behind him. Every step. There wasn't a place that Paul went to that somebody was trying to come in and to, 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 to steal the people. That somebody was not trying to come in and bring falsity. And we deal with it today, folks. That we're in such an environment today to where people are, are number one, they, they get Facebook church. Number one, they get, number two, they get an internet church. And they hear and all this stuff come in. And quite frankly, if Brother Donnie could be just clear with you and straight with you, a good majority of the church of Jesus Christ is just simply too ignorant of the scriptures. 
Because if we weren't so ignorant of the scriptures, church folks would be able to recognize, would be able to recognize falsity. And y'all just wait till I start teaching on the tithe system. That'll come later. Oh boy, I'll probably really get thrown off then. But anyway, uh, folks, I, I, again, I apologize for the technical difficulties. I appreciate you taking time to watch a study of God's word, 10 minutes in the word. And, and uh, I want you to know, I really appreciate it. I hope that you're growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there's ever a time that you're going to walk with Christ, please be it now. And until I see you next time, I'm praying for you. We love you from our family and you. I hope you have a great weekend. If I can do anything for you, let me know. Till next time, this is Brother Donnie, Country Homestead Preacher. God bless you. Bye-bye.